Welcome back. It has been a tough year for General Electric. The new CEO, John Flannery, announcing major restructuring plans to the company's operations and also cutting its dividend by 50 percent. The stock, the biggest loser on the Dow Industrials this year, down better than 40 percent in 2017. Bob Nardelli was an integral part of GE's senior executive suite for 30 years. I asked him to take us inside. Look at the company's future and whether he would actually buy GE stock today. It's really heartbreaking for me. I mean, I, I was so privileged to be part of General Electric for 30 years, to have, you know, Jack Welch as a mentor in providing leadership and really helped formulate a lot of my leadership skills and management skills. And it was such a collegiate kind of competitiveness there where no one threw anybody under the bus. You know, if I was short a couple of pennies, Jim McNerney would jump in or vice versa. And uh, it was just a wonderful, competitive, uh, spirited, passionate kind of culture. But a team, a team it, culture. It was a team yeah. culture. It was definitely a I team. Everybody took the field, wore the same jersey, right? Played for the logo on the front, not for their name on the back. So did that not happen once Jack left? I think I think there was a there definitely was a transition and some of that may have may have been market back environment. You know, we went through the downturn. Everybody kind of had to pull back uh, during seven, eight and nine. We saw the financial meltdown certainly help certainly hurt the Chrysler business that I was running at the well, time. Well, it was incredible how close GE came to not being able to turn the lights on. Yeah, amazing. Uh, uh, amazing. You would never have, even today, I don't think the average person understood that they weren't generating enough cash to pay the dividend. That's right. Which John Flannery, the new CEO, you know, appropriately had to make an adjustment. I think, you know, running a conglomerate takes an individual that really understands you know, the benefits of the goes ins and the goes outs, the sharing of technology and culture across, the ability to put one lever on and off. And Jack was a master at doing that appropriately and effectively. And the analysts, you know, when they would challenge, why don't you break it up? Jack would say, here's why. And, you know, they would give, they'd give them the Heisman and, and be able to fend them off. I, I think. Uh, but during, that's what Jeff Immelt did, right? I mean, Jeff Immelt sold GE Capital, that was 50% of the revenue. Yes. He sold NBC. Yes. He, he sold even, you know, uh, light bulbs. Yeah, and you lose optionality when you do that. Uh, you know, by selling a business a year to generate cash, to supplement the lack of cash flow, uh, I think really, really put them in the ditch. Uh, they're 50% unfunded in the pension. Uh, they're trying to sell these. When you announce that you're going to sell, you lose your side of the leverage on the table. I don't want to say it's a fire sale, but people know you, you, you're going to get rid of the, the, the transportation business, locomotive, which I ran, and which is a marvelous business. You're probably not going to see that business get disintermediated. So it's a solid business. And if you look at the numbers for transportation versus renewable, you got to wonder why they're getting rid of that and keeping you know, a very low return renewable business where you're you're buying the panels offshore mm -hmm. to be in the renewable energy business. And when you see the regulation pulled back on it, even further question the, la the logic and the strategy of you're staying right. in one business. And then you get down to three businesses, two are, two are industrial and one is medical. I, I hope that, you know, I hope the swan song here isn't, you know, push down 28,000 corporate people, put them into businesses, move them out, sell the final three and and then all of a sudden GE goes the way of Westinghouse. would be wow. a terrible, a terrible saga for a, a, a legacy company. That is, that is a horrible thought. And really, I mean, this, this was an icon of America. You can't really blame, oh, sometimes the law of large numbers, because look at Honeywell. Honeywell no. has done incredibly well under, under Dave Cody. Is there any reason to believe at these prices GE is a buy right here? Or are you not ready to, to go there yet? No, I, I, I think, um, unfortunately, I think... Uh, I would not be a buyer. It's I a think, show me stock right now. I think so. I think we have to see, you know, John made a, a strong present, uh, presentation to the analyst about what was going to happen. He wanted to take, take a billion dollars of cost out of power systems. I mean, there's an example where they did the Alstrom deal, but I think in exchange for doing it, they had to give so many things up where they handcuffed themselves on labor and costs and productivity in Europe. Uh, so whoever steps into that job now 
has a tremendous task to take a billion dollars of cost out. I want to ask you real quick about the auto sector today. Yeah. I and mean, you ran Chrysler at a really important time when when people's views were changing in terms of where they want. I know how popular the Jeep is at Chrysler. It's still incredibly popular, and they keep innovating there. But what about the electric car story? What, yeah. What's your take on what's going on? Autonomous, driverless. Will this really be a reality, do you think? I think it will be. I, I think it's all a question of not if, but when, and the rate of consumer acceptance. I mean, before they pulled back the CAFE standard, there was a period there where the government was going to impose you can only sell so many trucks or so many SUVs, and basically the rest of the consumer had to buy these small economical cars. Uh, I think GM's got a good approach with this combination of a 1.9 liter engine that continually powers the battery. So fundamentally, you can drive across country without having to stop to get a quick charge. Wow. I think part of the problem with Tesla is, is not having the infrastructure in place with reliability that if you start to drive, you can go get a quick charge at one of these, you know, quick charge stations that he talked about putting in place. So there's still some anguish about you know it's a great maybe little commuter car I'm not sure I could take it on a trip yeah but I, I think it will happen uh, I think electric vehicles uh, the thing that people may forget or may not understand is we did an analysis that if you converted everything to electric how many more power plants you'd have to build so it's it's not it's not a, 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 a an equal or quid pro quo electric cars there's no power plants because mm -hmm. something has to power that 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 battery back up again at night <laughs>